Hi, I'm Jason Politwar, a Product Group Manager with Iridian Spectral Technologies. And today I'll be talking about multi-band multi optical filters and the applications that can benefit from them. Iridian is a proud member of Epic. We joined this year and we were part of the Photonics Plus exhibition. You can reach out to us at www.iridian.ca or by email to sales at iridian.ca. So to begin with, Iridian is a Canadian supplier of custom optical filters and coatings with about 160 folks all working in that building that you see there in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. We've been around since 1998. We are uh, ISO 9001 2015 certified and registered as part of the Canadian Controlled Goods Program. Again, we design and manufacture thin film dielectric optical filters and coatings covering the wavelength range of the upper end of the UV, approximately 300 nanometers, out into the long wave IR. And recently we've extended that range, it used to end at about 10 microns, up to about 15 microns. Typically what we provide are customized solutions. We do have some standard offerings on the website, but really we're about finding a optical filter solution that, that provides the optimal balance of uh, the technical and commercial balance for our customers' specific needs. We provide filters in many different spectral configurations, gain flattening filters, edge filters, notch filters single band filters, and as we'll discuss today, multi-band filters. As well, we provide, provide spatially varying spectral filters, multi-zone filters that can provide uh, multiple band functionality in a multi-spectral imaging application. Our filters vary in size from the very small, sub-millimeter square to address telecom and datacom application needs, up to as large as 150 millimeters in diameter for applications such as astronomy. We have an excess of 20 energetic sputtering platforms and our newest that also has ion assisted evaporation, which has allowed us to extend that wavelength range farther into the long wave infrared. All of these systems are controlled by custom design and control software. And we also have in-house a clean room to do photolithography for some of our multispectral arrays. At Iridium, we specialize in wavelength selective optical filters. So filters that transmit selected wavelengths to a detector or an imager or an eye in the case of a human and reflect or block other wavelengths. So in, in all these instances, providing more signal and less background to the uh, end detector. Multiband filters provide similar functionality but allow multiple different spectral bands to be transmitted or imaged simultaneously. This has significant advantages in applications such as 3D entertainment, fluorescence, and telecommunications, and I'll discuss all of those today. Multiband optical filters are made through the same filter design and single deposition process as single band optical filters. Substrates are loaded into a deposition platform and a, and a multi-layer thin film deposition is, is performed. And each substrate that comes out of the, the coding platform essentially has the same multiband spectral performance characteristics and each part that's taken out of each substrate has those same characteristics. So within the bounds of the uniformity we can achieve in a coding run, there is a spatially invarying spectral performance. The advantage of multi-band optical filters is they allow multiple spectral bands to be selected or imaged simultaneously. And this can reduce component count and cost, complexity in systems, weight in systems. And additionally, provides no time lag for those different spectral bands, which is particularly important in applications such as cinema or in uh, fluorescence, as we'll talk about next. As I, as I mentioned, fluorescence is, really has a, an opportunity to benefit from multiband functionality. Standard epifluorescence microscopes image a single fluorophore at a time. An excitation filter transmits the excitation uh, light with a dichroic filter to the sample under test and a specific fluorophore that's uh, excited by that color then emits light and that, emission, that emitted light goes through an emission filter to the, the eyepiece or the detector. However, if there are multiple cellular structures or biological phenomena of interest that you want to image at the same time, as would be necessary in things like studying cell growth or cell death, you can imagine in cancer research, it's valuable to be able to look at different fluorophores and different structures simultaneously without having to switch between different filter cubes. Multi-band filters enable this. We can provide multi-band excitation filters, multi-dichroic filters, 
as well as multi-notch filters that can uh, clean up the filter at the emission end of the uh, system. Old-fashioned 3D consisted of a red lens in front of your front of one eye and a blue lens in front of the other eye, and you'd see the image on the screen. And after a while, you'd start feeling dizzy and getting a headache because uh, those anaglyphic systems really didn't preserve color very well and created a very different uh, spectral characteristics observed in each eye. And that disconnect was really disturbing to people. Recently, over the last decade and a half, 3D cinema has come back and the systems are much better and much more representative of true color. And this is achieved by having some red, green, and blue in each eye, but different red, green, and blue in each eye so that a different image can be observed through each eye. And those offset images on the 2D uh, screen in a cinema give the illusion of 3D. Multiband optical filters then can be used in the glasses themselves, a different red, green, blue multiband filter in each of the right and left lenses of these glasses, as well in lamp-based projection systems as a wheel to chop the image up into the red, green, and blue and the different red, green, and blue for the corresponding right and left eye images. Fiber optic telecom systems have always had a push to provide more signal faster at less cost. And that's never been more so than the present due to our increasing demands for bandwidth to support things such as the internet of things, all of our devices talking to and from the internet, video streaming, such as you're doing right now, uh, as well as you can imagine autonomous vehicles and their need to be communicating back and forth through the web. Putting multiple signals via wavelength division multiplexing or WDM on the fiber at the same time increases utilization and decreases cost. However, being able to do that with even fewer components provides even more value to these systems. Back in 2008, we began working with wireless systems manufacturers to combine both upstream and down, downstream signals through a single dual band filter. And we've now done the same with triple band filters for telecom systems. This reduces component costs and complexity of builds in these, in these very tight, very small systems, and also um, reduces the loss in the systems. Each of these fiber optic components has its own insertion loss. The fewer components, the fewer insertion loss the system uh, obtains. So multiband filters can provide not only for uh, reduced costs, but actually Im improved performance. Finally, uh, gain flattening filters have always provided a, 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 a provided a role in, in telecom systems as they flatten the gain profile of erbium doped fiber amplifiers. However, these systems need both the gain flattening filter component as well as a separate component that blocks that 980 pump signal that caused the amplification from getting through to the, the output signal. By creating a hybrid gain flattening filter, a multi-band filter, or to be perfectly accurate, a multi-function filter that has both gain flattening filter capabilities in the telecom 1550 nanometer region that needs the gain flattening, as well as blocking capabilities for the pump laser at 980, Again, a single component can be removed from these systems, reducing component count and cost and reducing loss. So I hope this talk today has, has given you at least a brief introduction to multiband optical filters and what, what they are and the different applications and how they're used. I'd ask you to visit us, visit our booth at Photonics Plus, but that's, that's, that's long gone. So uh, you can visit us on our website at www.iridian.ca. Or you can reach out to me directly, jason.palidvor at iridian.ca. I'll be happy to discuss any needs or questions about optical filters for multiband optical filters or the many other applications that we address with our capabilities at Iridian. Thanks very much for your attention.